Hello YouTube and welcome back to Ships and Stuff. As always, I'm your captain, Lee Spicer, and today aboard the Daedalus we have a very special episode for you. First, this episode's special because Side 7 Exports is doing a giveaway alongside this episode. They're giving away the Hardgraft Core Fighter, a scaled up high detailed version of our favorite fighter from the Universal Century. Now how do you enter to win? That is easy folks. Subscribe to our channel here on YouTube, like this video, and leave a comment down below of your favorite ship from science fiction. It doesn't have to be Gundam, but do tell us why it's your favorite. The second reason this episode's incredibly important is this is the first episode that is crowdsourced. That's right, you guys voted in a poll, and today, the first user viewer selected ship is the Ptolemyos 2 from Gundam 00 Season 2, and we'll also be covering the Ptolemyos 2 Kai from Awakening of a Trailblazer as they're almost identical. The Ptolemyos 2 is interesting not necessarily because of the upgrades that the ship has, but why. Between Seasons 1 and 2, Celestial Being no longer has access to Veda and their plans aren't dictated as such, so you're left with people like Ian Voshti to design the predecessor, the Ptolemyos 2, after the Ptolemyos is effectively destroyed at the end of Season 1. You start to see the Ptolemyos 2 not only fix some of the errors in the original, but you start to see a more traditional military design philosophy. Now, from a surely technical perspective, both ships are actually the same length, coming in at 251 meters long. By comparison, the white base comes in at 262 meters, so generally these ships are pretty comparable in size. However, no actual dimensions are given for height or width of the Ptolemyos II, it is quite a bit bigger than its predecessor. Now, on either ship, <laughs> there's no direct number of large GN condensers given as far as the power plant for the ship goes, but we can assume that the Ptolemyos II has more as it has more things that would be using those stored particles. So, no number, but we can assume more. The propulsion unit itself is also slightly different. While it still maintains the two main GN thrusters and that iconic big GN drive cone looking thing sticking out of the back, it also has 14 additional thrusters mounted all over the hull for help in maneuvering not only in space, but in atmosphere and underwater. This is the only ship to date in the Anno Domina era that can actually go from space into atmosphere, underwater, back into atmosphere, back into space. No other ship, whether it was one of the three blocks, the Federation, or the ALAWS could do this. Now, the combat capabilities were also greatly increased, not just due to armament, but the actual complement of mobile suits. You can launch three mobile suits at once, which would help the mobile suits get into battle much quicker, help the ship's battle readiness. It can also store at least five mobile suits. Now, all the information I'm seeing is five plus, and if I recall correctly, at the end of 00 season two, the ship had seven, if you're counting the GN Archer, which I technically would because it was stored separate of the Arios. They weren't stored in their fighter configurations, to my understanding. Now. In Awakening of a Trailblazer, we see Celestial Being has acquired some other mobile suits like the Colony Use Flag, so we can assume that mobile suits like those, you could probably store closer to 10 as opposed to just the Gundams, as the Gundams tend to be quite a bit bulkier comparatively. Now, in terms of actual improvements, in terms of equipment and armament, you still maintain the GN field, just like you had on the Ptolemyos 1, but you can actually use the Trans Am system, which was unlocked at the end of um, Season 1 of Gundam 00, but you also have optical camouflage. Now this feature comes in massive use being in atmosphere and underwater. In space it's not necessarily as big of a deal, which is why the Ptolemyos 1 didn't have it. However, when you're you know flying over a desert or trees or underwater, it helps to blend in especially when your main sense of surveillance is coming from satellites from your enemy. So, Now, in terms of armament, there's a lot added here, as the Ptolemyos 1 didn't have any. 
So its main armament is a two, two dual barreled GN cannons that pop out of the top of the ship. Now these fire large blasts of compressed GN particles going back to having more uh, GN condensers on board or at least having to have one of the Gundams. There are also four smaller automated GN cannon turrets all forward facing on the main section of the ship we see here. And a slight variation of that, we have the GN flat cannons. Now of course, we wouldn't be anywhere without the Macross levels of GN missiles. And in terms of those, we have 12 large GN missile launchers, 38 smaller regular GN missile launchers, and 4 GN torpedo launchers. So we have a lot of projectiles that can be shot out of the Ptolemyos too. Now much like its predecessor, it was really only going to be carrying about 4 mobile suits at a time, and those would be, of course, the Gundams of Celestial Bane. Those being the GN006 Cheritum, the GN007 Arios, the GN008 Cerevi, and the GN0000 Gundam. Now, of course, throughout the second season, uh, support equipment was going to be on the ship, such as the 00 Riser, later the GN Archer, and towards the end, you also had the O Gundam itself. Now, in Awakening of a Trailblazer, we see a little bit of a different setup with having the Celestial Being version of the Colony Use flag, as at this point Celestial Being wasn't getting that Wong Lume money, so they had to start being a little more economic on how they actually used and procured mobile suits. Now of course, in the movie they also had different mobile suits. They had different Gundams they would be using, such as the Zabanya, the Harut, the Raphael, and of course, the Double O Quant. Now, the Ptolemyos 2 Kai, just in general, does, hasn't been covered a lot in this video, mainly because it's almost identical, with the only main difference coming with GN boosters being mounted to the sides. They say there's some improvements to the electronics internally and weapon systems, but we never really get to see that all that much. Visually, the only big difference are those two boosters. The Ptolemyos 2 has a much more active record than its predecessor, largely in part due to the weaponry added between the two seasons. We first see it appear after the GN008 Cerevi Gundam rescues the Exia Repair with Saji Crossroad and Setsnef Sei aboard. The next time we really see it jump into action is the rescue of Alleluia Haptism. Now, Alleluia at this point is being kept in a prison facility off the coast. We aren't really exactly sure where, um, but it's the only thing around. Um, it's been dug into the side of a cliff, and the Ptolemyos utilizes its ability to enter the atmosphere and dive to create a massive tidal wave, not only wiping out the ground troops and support equipment on the ground, but also having the power of the energy weaponry used by the A-Laws and the Federation. Now, they only have about 300 seconds that lasts, and that's really all we see the Ptolemyos to do, but it is important to note that it played a massive role in the strategy of rescuing Alleluia. Now, it does spend some time on Earth, mostly hanging out with Catheron, then it goes back into space, where it helps the Catheron Space Forces attack the Momento Mori right after a somewhat important battle in space. Now, the Momentum Mori being the massive laser weapon, we really get to see the Ptolemyos to show what it can do in terms of weaponry. Not only are the massive double barrel GN cannons being used, but we're also seeing all the missile launchers, we're seeing the GN turrets, I can assume the GN flat cannons are used as well, even though we can't really tell the difference as far as what it looks like in animation. And then after that, we return back to Earth. Now, the A-Laws are just really big on the Momentum Mori, so they rebuild it, and they end up destroying one of the pillars, or one of the orbital elevators, as it were. This is a huge problem, and we really start to see things come to a head as the Celestial Being team has to make a final push and say, okay, well, we need to get back to Veda, we need to take control, and we need to stop what the Innovades are doing, we need to stop Ribbons Reborn. 
That happens. It's great. The Ptolemyos 2 takes some pretty severe damage in this battle. But one really, really cool thing is we get that final shot from the end of Season 2 where we have Setsna facing off in the Axia repair with ribbons in the O. Really nicely tied bow on the series. And then the Ptolemyos 2 itself gets pretty damaged in the battle with the ELS. And we don't really know. It gets mostly assimilated, so we don't really know if it comes back or if it's just mostly destroyed. But overall, it lived a much longer life than its predecessor. And that is it for the Ptolemyos 2 and the Ptolemyos 2 Kai. Now, if I missed anything, pop those facts down in the comments below. And of course, be sure to like the video and subscribe so that way you can take part in the polls in the community tab where we'll be checking out what future ships we can do. Now, of course, don't forget Side7Exports is doing that giveaway. Be sure to put your comments down below as well to enter for that. Like and subscribe as well. And just generally check out their store if you're looking for P Bandai or Gundam basic exclusive stuff, phenomenal seller to check out. And of course, last and most definitely not least, stay safe in your space travels.